Welcome to Canterbury Cottage. I'm Sherry and I am so glad you stopped by today. It is absolutely freezing here in the Midwest and we are expecting up to 12 inches of snow in the next few days. However, the stores are filling full of spring decor, and that includes Joanna Gaines' iconic Magnolia line and her hearth and hand decor sold at Target stores. I love Joanna's style, but I do not love her prices. So today, I'm going to show you how I replicated 15 items from her spring line without spending much money at all. So if you want some ideas for creating the Magnolia look for less, let's get started. When I saw these little half circle wood shelves, I knew exactly what I was going to use to dupe them. I had seen this inexpensive wood tray at Hobby Lobby recently and knew it would be easy to slice in half. The wood is extremely lightweight. I attached a strip of scrap plywood along what would now be the back of my shelf to create extra reinforcement. I attached it with wood glue and small wood screws, making sure that my screw did not come through the surface of the shelf. To stain the wood, I brushed on some watered-down antiquing wax, wiping off the excess. Because I wanted a softer wood tone, I followed the antiquing wax with a coat of white wax, again wiping off the excess. To hang the shelves, I purchased a package of corner braces and attached two to each shelf using the wood screws that came in the package. I realize that you might not like the appearance of being able to see the corner braces, but I think if you painted them with matching wall paint, they would blend into the background and you would hardly notice them. Hobby Lobby had several different sizes of these wood rounds, and one of the advantages of making your own is that you can cut the circles to the size and depth that you want perfect for your home. Looking for some new napkin rings? Well, you can dupe these in under 10 minutes. All you need is an old leather belt. I thrifted this one at Goodwill. Cut your belt into 7-inch strips. You can leave the cut in straight or round them off if you like. This was actually the most time-consuming part. Fold the belt over on itself and drill a hole through both about an inch from the end. Insert a metal paper fastener through the hole and open the clasp on the back side. To seal the cut edges of the belt, I passed a lit match over the edge for just a few seconds. I had a small piece of belt left, which I used to create a loop to hold the four other napkin rings. It was a little short, so I extended the length by tying the two ends together with some twine. I have a lot of metal paper fasteners left, and I actually think it would be fun to use an assortment of belts in different colors and sizes to create a collection of napkin rings. I came up with a couple different ideas for duplicating these little metal plant stands. My first idea was to rip the fabric off of a ribbed lampshade. You'll also need to remove the harp or butterfly clip if your shade has those attached. I used a sanding sponge to remove any remaining glue residue before I sprayed the frame with some gold metallic spray paint. Although I liked this thrifted homemade pottery bowl, it was a little too textured for my taste. So I mixed a little chalk paint in with some joint compound and spread that over the bowl to even out the texture some. When the joint compound was dry, I went over it with a sanding block. Then I painted both the inside and outside of the bowl with Rust-Oleum's chiffon cream chalk paint. 
and when the chalk paint was dry, I went over the bowl again, this time using Dishwasher Safe Mod Podge, because I wanted to put a live plant in the bowl. I thought I would dupe this hearth and hand metal trellis to use with the plant too. I merely ripped off all the little extra pieces on a lampshade harp and spray painted it with the same gold metal spray paint. Okay, is it just me or is this as cute as I think it is? For less than the cost of one hearth and hand trellis, I came up with a metal pot stand, a pot, and a trellis that I think are just as adorable as the ones sold by Magnolia. The floral design on these plant pots gave me another idea. And so I decided to use a floral napkin to decoupage a design onto a white bowl that I already had. These were two-ply napkins, so I pulled off the back layer and then cut up the front layer into smaller pieces so that it would curve better around the sides of my bowl. I applied Mod Podge to a small section of bowl and then pressed the piece of napkin into the Mod Podge, smoothing out any wrinkles. I also cut some slits along the bottom to help the napkin curve around the bottom of the bowl. Some people like to use a small piece of saran wrap to smooth out the wrinkles, but I prefer just working with my hands. Because I was going to put a live plant in the bowl, I used a dishwasher safe Mod Podge as the top coat. I often see metal stands at the thrift store, like this one, that can easily be updated by changing out the bowl. With a little gold spray paint, I had another unique metal plant stand, perfect for my decoupaged bowl. I bought these napkins at Tuesday morning, but Amazon sells some really pretty ones too that I'll have linked for you in the description box. When I saw this tree sketch for $138 on the Magnolia website, I knew I could dupe it for a whole lot less. I tore off the paper, folded back the staples, and removed the artwork from this pretty thrifted frame that I paid only $3.99 for. I purchased a piece of black poster board at Dollar Tree and cut it to fit inside my frame. I had previously thrifted this sketch pad and decided to print my image on this slightly thicker paper. I just cut it to fit inside my printer tray. After printing, I folded along the edges of the image and then tore them in a straight line. I measured and made some marks on my poster board so that I could perfectly center the image. Then I just adhered the image to the poster board using a good quality glue stick. I put my tree sketch in my frame, returned the original artwork, folded down the staples, and then covered the back side with some brown craft paper which I attached to the frame using the same glue stick. I wasn't crazy about the gold paint on the frame, so I went over it with some other gold paint that I had, and when that was dry, I went over it with a little watered-down antiquing wax to give it some extra depth. The print on this is a really high-resolution image, and I absolutely love how it turned out. I had planned on selling it, but I think I'm going to have to find a spot for it because I want to keep it. Since it costs less than $5, I can easily make another one to sell in my booth. If you've watched my channel before, you've probably seen me turn a lamp or two into a side table. But when I saw this beautiful gold lamp at the thrift store, I just couldn't resist doing it one more time. I started by removing the base plate and then removing the concrete weight that was just inside the base. Then I cut the cord so that I could pull it through the lamp. Instead of attaching a wood round to the top, I decided to use this metal decorative plate that I already had. 
I traced and cut out a paper circle so that I could drill a hole in the exact center of the plate. I adjusted the lamp's metal tube so that it stuck slightly through the metal plate, and then I used a nut that came off of the lamp to tighten it. I added a couple drops of super glue on both sides of the plate for extra stability. Then I returned the concrete weight and base plate on the bottom of the lamp. I didn't mind having the nut in the middle of the plate, but I wanted to show you an option if you want a flat surface. This old clock face was the perfect size for this table, so I filled the hole in the middle with some wood fill, and when that was dry, I sanded it smooth. Then I gave it a coat of black chalk paint. To adhere the clock to the metal plate, I went around the edges first with construction adhesive and then with E6000. I clamped it to the table, set some paint cans on top to weigh it down, and let it dry overnight. The next day, I gave it a couple coats of gold paint. First, I spray painted the top and bottom of the plate with gold spray paint, and when that was dry, I went over it with my gold acrylic paint. I also brushed some of the acrylic paint on the lamp so that the two pieces would be united in color. When the gold paint was dry, I applied a little watered-down antiquing wax to the tabletop. In retrospect, it would have been a whole lot easier if I had just added a thick wood round to the top of the lamp base, but I was trying to make use of the supplies that I already had on hand, and I still think it turned out pretty good. When I saw these pricey magnolia vases, I was reminded of the IOD paint inlays that I used in a recent video. I decided to try out the technique on this thrifted vase that I purchased well over a year ago. I started by spraying the vase with bullseye primer. When the primer was done, I applied a coat of the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream Chalk Paint. I trimmed off the edges of two paint inlay sheets so that I could better line up the pattern. Then I would paint one small section of the vase at a time and carefully press the paint inlay into the paint. Then I would lightly mist it and smooth out any wrinkles using my fingers, but you could use a damp sponge if you prefer. Once the vase was completely covered, I cut a few small pieces to apply to the bottom I didn't worry about matching up the pattern here. Once the paint inlays were completely dry, I misted the entire vase again, let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then peeled off the paint inlay sheets. You can actually reuse them up to four times. To imitate the aged appearance of the magnolia vases, I dabbed on some hazelnut brown chalk paint along the top rim, along the base, and in random spots on the sides of the vase. If you get too much brown paint, you can always go back over it with a little bit of the chiffon cream chalk paint. This is a fun and easy way to update a vase that you're not using. I love how it turned my fake mercury glass vase into something that is perfect for my English cottage style. Although I have seen other DIYers dupe similar vases to this Magnolia Bud vase, I had never actually tried it myself but I was pretty sure I could make it for a lot less than $18. I started by applying a coat of ivory chalk paint to an inexpensive thrifted vase. Then I used a ruler to mark where the first line of my gemstone stickers would be placed. I purchased these gemstones at Walmart because they were slightly larger than the ones that I saw at Dollar Tree. After I had all the stickers applied, I went over the vase with a coat of joint compound, 
First, I spread it on with a spatula, and then I put my hand inside a Ziploc bag so I could easily smooth off the excess. Once the joint compound was dry, I sanded off any rough spots. Then I painted the entire vase with two coats of the ivory chalk paint. When the paint was dry, I applied a coat of the dishwasher safe Mod Podge so that the vase would be water resistant. So this project was so cheap to make. And it's another great idea for using vases that you already have on hand. I absolutely love the texture and the cottage appeal of how this little bud vase turned out. These little mirrored wall sconces are a pretty easy find at my local thrift store. So I thought I would take this project up a notch. I had these metal leaves that broke off of some other thrifted wall decor that I had, so I decided to super glue them to the mirror frame to add extra embellishment. To make them look like they had always been there, I painted them with some black chalk paint and then rubbed some of it off with a baby wipe. I decided to add a little E6000 adhesive behind the leaves to make sure that they stayed stuck to the mirror frame. I hope that if you're ever looking for a sconce that you'll check your thrift store first because I was able to duplicate this Magnolia wall sconce for one tenth of the price and it's very easy to add embellishments to make it perfect for your home decor. Here is another project that is easy and inexpensive to duplicate, framed sheet music. Thrift or paint existing frames in your desired color. Black is always a classic look for sheet music. I have had the best luck finding vintage books of sheet music at small charity thrift stores run by local churches. If you can't find any, I'll link some images that you can use instead. Once you have your sheet music, go around the edges, applying water with a small paintbrush. Allow the water to soak in for a few seconds and then carefully tear the edges off of all four sides of your sheet music. Cut a piece of white or black poster board to fit inside your frame and then apply a good quality glue stick to the back of your sheet of music. Carefully center the sheet of music on your poster board and smooth out any wrinkles. Insert the poster board and the original backing back in the frame and reattach any back hardware and you're done. I could make over 50 of these for less than the price of one purchased from Magnolia. Granted, theirs was poster size, but if I made 50, I could fill up a pretty big wall. I guess I must be in the mood for spring because I decided to try my hand at making yet another metal plant stand. I recently thrifted this modern candelabra and was pleasantly surprised to discover that each of the drip stands easily screwed off. So I took the lid off of an old metal tin that I had, found the center of the lid, and drilled a small hole, just like I had done on the gold lamp table. I attached the lid to the drip pan stand using a nut I found in my stash that fit the tubing perfectly. I also added a little super glue. Then I gave the whole thing a couple coats of gold spray paint. To create a level surface for your plant to sit on, you could just put a smaller lid inside the tin lid, or you can do like I did and cut out a couple circles of self-adhesive cork from Dollar Tree to even out the surface. The Magnolia version definitely looks nicer, but it also cost 10 times as much. To dress mine up, I added some gold trim to a bowl that I already had, 
and made another one of those lamp harp trellises to match the metal of the plant stand. When I saw these magnolia clay vases, they reminded me of brown craft paper. So I decided to upcycle a vase that I had previously upcycled by Mod Podging brown craft paper to the outside. I just applied Mod Podge to the vase and then applied multiple strips of thin brown craft paper until I had the entire vase covered. To avoid too much wrinkling, I applied small pieces of the craft paper around the top lip. Then I went over the entire vase with another coat of Mod Podge. When the Mod Podge was dry, I went over the vase with a sanding block. And then I mixed up some chalk paint with some joint compound and began spreading that over the vase with a spatula. When this mixture was dry, I went over the vase again with some more sandpaper, and I had some incredible texture. I should have stopped then because it really did look great, but it just wasn't what I wanted, and so I decided to continue with this science experiment. I drew a straight line around the vase a couple inches from the bottom so that I would have a place to line up some napkins. That's right, I was going to decoupage the vase. Like before, I applied Mod Podge to a small section of the vase and then adhered one ply of a strip from my napkin into the Mod Podge, smoothing it out with my fingers. I kept repeating this process until I worked my way around the entire vase. I added separate little pieces around the lip of the vase to avoid extra thickness and wrinkling. I wanted the vase to look really aged, so when the Mod Podge was dry, I went around the vase with a sanding block, sanding away some of the napkin. And then I applied a very light coat of watered down antiquing wax over the entire vase. I let that dry for a little bit, and then I applied a protective coat of Mod Podge. I have totally lost count of how many layers I have applied to this thrifted vase. I don't even remember what it originally looked like. But I know what it looks like now, and I love it, and I will not be selling it anytime soon. This pricey woven wall shelf looked like a wicker tray to me. I was able to find a nice sized wicker tray at the thrift store for just a couple dollars, but it was red, so I gave it a couple coats of white spray paint. To create shelves, I cut up some scrap wood that I had in my garage that was already the perfect depth for the basket. I cut the ends at a slight angle so the shelves would fit snugly inside the basket. Once I had the shelves arranged, I screwed them in place going through the back of the basket. I also joined the shelves together on the front using a few brad nails. To unify the color of my scrap wood, I went over the cut edges with some watered down antiquing wax. Then I filled in any gaps between the ends of the shelves and the side of the basket with white caulk. This cleans up the look and adds to the stability of the shelves. If you want a cleaner look, you could hang the basket on the wall by driving nails through the bottom of the basket, or you could do like I did and tie some jute rope through the handles and hang it on the wall with that. Either way, it's a pretty cute shelf for under $4. Okay, here's my last idea, and it's an easy one. Pick up a small dish. It could be a soap dish at the thrift store or dollar store. Use Cricut vinyl or stickers to spell out the word spoon and place those letters centered in your dish. Cover the letters and the surface of the dish 
with a thick layer of Mod Podge hard coat. Let it dry. Apply a second coat if you like. The Mod Podge hard coat creates an epoxy-like surface, so now the dish can be easily wiped clean. Well, I hope I shared an idea or two today that you'll want to try. I highly recommend the dotted bud vase. It was an easy project and highly satisfying. But you'll have to let me know which project was your favorite. As always, thank you so very, very much for watching. I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.